Good morning, good evening, good night, Regal family. Today we're going to run through a recap of the UFC Fight Night Fiziv vs. Gamrock card. Honestly, it wasn't a bad card in my personal opinion. However, when it gets punctuated with a fluke injury like what happened to Fiziv, it always kind of ruins the night. So let's get right into the prelims. We're just going to run over all the fights as well as all the best moments from the night and obviously my picks. The card started out with Vidal vs. Randon, absolute terrible fight, not gonna waste really any time talking about it, super boring. Tit punch TKO at one point, where the girl Randon punched Vidal's boob and then they gave them like a timeout as if it was a groin shot almost. Randon looked like decent, but only better than Vidal, she's not gonna go far, she's too old and too basic, but whatever, my pick was wrong, 0-1 on the card. Moving up to Mizuki versus Goldie. Actually, a decent WMMA fight. Mizuki looked pretty good, pretty well-rounded. Uh, especially after three years off, I'm impressed with their ability to grapple with Goldie. Especially Goldie looks like she's on roids. Fully blown on roids. But she also sucks. No real fight IQ. 29-28 decision for Mizuki. My pick 100% correct decision for Mizuki. She was strong in the clinch and her striking looked really good, but she needs to work on her range management because she doesn't need to be getting into the clinch with women like Goldie. So, but I appreciate her humble post-fight speech where she's going like, I need to do better. I'll do better in my next performance. We appreciate that. We appreciate you, Mizuki. Let's move on up to Usman versus Collier. Fun fight. I thought it was a great fight. You guys know I love walrus matchups. Uh, two king walruses fighting for dominance on the beach. The eye poke is really unfortunate because in my personal opinion, Collier won the first round. I don't know how any judge gave that 30-27 to Usman. It was absolutely ridiculous. Collier outstruck him by like 10 or 15 strikes in the first round. But he did lose the fight. Uh, that eye poke was disgusting, nasty, and they have to do something about that. We don't look at framing off with your fingers fully out into someone's eyes as intentional. It's just like, don't do that with your fingers. They should know not to do that. They don't do that in training. Mohamed Usman does not jab four fingers into the eyes of his opponents in sparring. No one does. It's deliberate. Points should be taken immediately for an eye poke like that. It's not like you're grazing his eye with a thumb. You're deliberately shoving your fingers into the eye as you frame off from someone to get an advantage in the fight. And then look at, lo and behold, Mo Usman wins the fight and starts to pull ahead and able to fight behind his jab in the second because Collier couldn't see, and then he immediately gets split open once he comes back on his other eye. Usman sucks, no finishing ability. Collier is right, just because your brother can fight doesn't mean you can. So, 2-1 and one on picks, though I did pick Usman. I picked him my first round, grand pound KO, but whatever. Moving up to Malcoon versus Brandage, not much of a fight to talk about here. Aggressive start by Brandage, but he landed like no strikes, and Malcoon was just mogging him, landing really heavy, good shots. From a dominant position on the ground, obviously, but a lot of the shots were going through the back of the head, and then he lands, not in a sequence, just an isolated elbow to the back of Brundage's head. I know a lot of people were pissed off because they bet on Malcoon. I picked Malcoon, but he's an idiot and he threw away the fight. Like, come on. What do you expect Brundage to do? He took the fight on short notice, gets brutalized, and then elbowed in the back of the head. Of course, you're going to take the easy W and the fight pay bonus. Mark Smith doesn't really deserve flack for that. That's the only thing you can do. He has to roll as a DQ because it was an intentional foul. So people giving Mark Smith, I hate Mark Smith, but you can't really give him shit for that. It means versus Cialo, what an absolute beatdown from Dirty Bird Tim Means on Fialo. Brutalized the guy. Tim Means looked actually good. It wasn't even like Fialo just looked like complete crap. Fialo was popping in with straight rights that a lot of other guys' chins would have got tested by. Means has a crazy chin for 40 years old. He absolutely brutalized Fialo. Great fight, to be honest. If you had to watch a fight back from the night, I'd watch the Means-Fialo fight. Two great rounds, and then Means just puts Fialo away in the third. It was sick, honestly. Argetta versus Johns, I'm not gonna lie, I fell asleep through part of this. I was, like, coming in and out. All I really remember from it was Miles Taco Johns. Someone in chat said that his nickname's Taco Johns or something. Miles Taco Johns. Like every time I'd open my eyes, I just see him like standing there, like hunched down, and then Argetta walk in with no uh, defense and just get clocked by wild right hooks and wild overhands, like full out clocked and just get. Every time I open my eyes, like Argetta was covered in more and more blood. So regardless, Miles Taco Johns took the unanimous decision, and I went two and four on the prelims. 
All right, let's get on up to the main card. Ramos versus Jordan. Nice, quick, slick sub by Charles Jordan. You can't really say much about it. Bit of an underwhelming finish. You could say a bit of an underwhelming fight just because, you know, really was quick and there wasn't much to happen. Charles Jordan executed his game plan perfectly. We can all make fun of Charles Jordan for being a round earther and, a, and spreading conspiracy theories about the shape of the earth, but he planned that perfectly. He knew Ramos would likely get him to the ground. And then once he was got back up, he baited him into the guillotine. That was sick. I think it was arm and guillotine. Perfectly wrapped up. Completely baited Ramos. High IQ. Very high IQ fight move from Charles Jordan. I like to see that. I really like to see that. So it was a great way to start the card. Battle versus Fletcher. Good fight. Fletcher's tough. He does have that dog in him. But he got messed up from those body kicks especially the brutal heavy teeps that battle was landing on him at range in the first and then oh of course brian battle has to mess up everyone's picks and bets and stuff by getting a submission in the second round rear naked choke good win for battle battle looks good completely unintelligible post-fight speech uh but a lot of people say that he's got that he's got that pat berry black scent power now and it's gonna take him uh, carry him far places Combined with the blonde Oliveira hair, I think battle might be unstoppable. Give him Ian Gary right now. Rodriguez versus Watterson was a brutal, brutal, brutal beatdown from an athlete on an OnlyFans woman, basically, because Rodriguez pulverized her in the first round, and Michelle Watterson's kid was in the crowd watching that happen. She had a laceration like five inches across her forehead. It was insane. And then comes out in the second, good for her, good heart, because that wasn't like a typical WMMA fight. She was getting brutally beaten. And then, obviously, TKO for Rodriguez. Good win for Rodriguez. Mitchell versus Ige. I predicted it wrong in my predictions video, but I switched my pick last minute on my topology to Bryce Mitchell by decision, so I did get it correct. But I had picked then Ige by like second or third round TKO or something like that on my predictions video, but the ma my mana reads in the week changed completely. I knew Bryce had the proper mentality to get it done. Regardless of what you say, it was a bit of a close fight. I know Ige cut him under the eye, like up in here in the first round. Should get the first round, to be honest. Second round, I know he got the cut above the eye, but if we're judging fights on cumulative damage, Dan Ige got that the very start of the round from one combo and then lost the rest of the round. And also, Bryce ended in a very dominant position. It's a toss-up. I think the second round is the fight decider. And I think I could lean either way. Is it a robbery? Slightly. Whatever. Bible man before the fight. Exact same Bible as me. He has the exact same Bible as me. It's the King James Gideon Bible. His literally is placed by the Gideons. These are like hotel Bibles, but they're some of the best Bibles you can get. You got to be reading the King James Version, and you got to be flexing that on the crowd and thousands of people watching around the world. Bryce Mitchell, you are based. Michael Bisbean, you are demonic. It is one thing not to believe in God and not to be a Christian. It is an entirely other thing to hate God. Christians. Why does Michael Bisbean feel the need to respond to Brendan Fitzgerald saying Bryce Mitchell is fighting for a higher purpose and Bisbean laughs and says, huh, what purpose? You know what purpose. You just had like an hour long interview with the man, not a day before these fights. You know Bryce Mitchell's attitude and his worldview and his beliefs, whether or not you agree with it, do you need to mock it? Because Bisbean would only do that to Bryce Mitchell and Christians. He would not mock a man holding up Islamic religious symbols before his fight or praying Islamic prayers after a fight. Absolutely not. Michael Bisbean hates Christians and hates Jesus. And this is evident by what he did after the fight. He did not have to leave and cut their interview short when Bryce Mitchell asked if he could stay for the prayer with him and Dan Ige. He made that call himself and chose to leave. Despite Bisbean's attempt to censor Bryce, Brandon Fitzgerald and Dominic Cruz should be commended for their attempts to bring the conversation back to what Bryce had steered it towards. Bisbean seems to seriously get, like take it personally when people believe in Christ. It's really weird. And it made me lose a heck of a lot of respect for that because I like Bisbean and I think he's one of the biggest, he's the biggest name on MMA YouTube and he's one of the biggest like stars 
uh, of ex UFC fighters, especially for being active in the community. And I do appreciate what he does, but he needs to really divorce himself from his personal biases when he's in a professional setting. It is extraordinarily unprofessional to mock people's religious beliefs and to deny them the right to prayer. I'm actually working on a longer like documentary style video on Bryce Mitchell's interview on the Believe You Me podcast, as well as Michael Bisbean's hateful reaction to the Bible and the mention of Jesus. Anyway, let's move on to the main event. Weird, weird, weird. I mean, good first round, to be honest, like bit boring, but it was very technical and very high IQ from both guys. It was a good round for hardcore MMA fans to watch. I personally think Fizzy have got it. He had a very good game plan, a very good ability to execute that game plan with a heck of a lot of body shots. Not necessarily too much power, but when he had those opportunities, he would open up. And uh, I think he really had to take the first. Some people were saying it went to Gamrot, but uh, I think Fizzy have took it. Weird, weird, weird fluke. He throws that kick early in the second, and then his lead leg, like the, like the leg he was bracing on, just he blows a tendon or something in it. Tendon rips, tendon tears, tweaks it. Super weird, super fluky. Very unfortunate that these uh, things happen. We've had a lot of these knee injuries, right? Aspinall, Cater. So it is unfortunate. Gamera is based for following up on him after he saw he had the fluke injury, get the ground and bound TKO, and then basically celebrate his opponent's injury and call out Oliveira fighting for a title or Makachev, the champ. Gamera based 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 i love gamrot he's a crazy man but he is a yapper holy crap does he yap i'm a bit disappointed he didn't throw on the the super thick glasses and start rambling about how his name is mateusz gamrot and he's from poland like he used to always do but yeah he's fluent in japanese someone in my chat yesterday said and he really is he needs to shut up fluky win terrible way to punctuate the end of the card i ended up going six and five on the entire card I got, like I said earlier, two and four on the prelims. Not very good. And then I got a Jordan, Battle, Rodriguez, Mitchell. I count my last minute switch, even though I didn't pub publicize it and did not get the physics. So I almost actually swapped the main card. It wouldn't have been so bad if I did. Uh, weird night, though. Anyway, um, big things coming for the channel in the next few days uh, or in weeks. I'm doing a podcast with a surprise co-host. And I have uh, some collabs lined up with some people in the community because I want to put on some of the uh, smaller channels that have supported me over the months. And uh, I have a bunch of good documentary ideas for the week. So drop a like if you liked the video. If you didn't, don't care. And subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'd like to give a big thanks to all my channel members as well as a special shout out to all my Lion Tier members, Coltis Gordon, Uniform Down, Ninja Choke, Bubster Johnson, Mexican Gnome, Clarence, Mike Brannigan, Javier, Cobra Kai, MMA Gremlin, Pigger, Strap Jackson, Patrick Call, Droid C, and John Paul DeHoria. Dime Bobby. Dime Mommy.